r slash dating over 30. Logoy Sego says. I think I, frick, add up a really good thing. This is pretty much am I the butthole post. It's either I am, or she has cold feet, but we'll get to that. There is a lot to unpack here. I 38 male, met a 42 female, just over a year ago. It was fireworks from day one. We were pretty much living together within the first month, officially after the second, and got our own bigger place month five. We just celebrated our one year anniversary. We have a trip booked to visit her country, family, and get engaged in January. She wants kids, wanted to have them with me. We agreed we would discuss this after a year and reevaluate. It's been a year. She stopped wearing her birth control, we had the talk, I asked her to please keep it on for now until we commit, and actually move to the next step. I have a 9 years old kid, she has always wanted her own, and has frozen eggs, seen specialists, and is prepared to regardless of a man being in her life. I think the context here might be important, as I can't understand what the heck is going on the last week. I might have, frick, edit right. Up this week, while underslept and extremely frustrated. I have problems sleeping, I've seen sleep therapists, the whole nine. I have to be careful with my routine slash sleep hygiene. For the last year, we wake up at the same time. First, with my last job, we would get up at 5.30 to 5.45. Now it is 6 o'clock. The thing is, I'm a light sleeper and often wake up at 2 to 4 a.m., then struggle to get back to sleep. She doesn't need to be up until 6 o'clock to 6.30, she often works from home, but sets an alarm at 5.30 and 5.45, then both of us at 6 o'clock, 1 to 3 alarms, before we need to even think about getting out of bed. They seem to change all the time. Her notifications and do not disturb settings have improved, as it would also be dozens of notifications on her email for the copious amounts of junk she gets. This has all driven me insane. I had to plead for her to set up her do not disturb until 630 or 7 am, dozens, and dozens of times. Probably daily for the first few months. It drove me, frick, I'm nuts. I made it extremely clear that. It was not acceptable to have dings beeps and other notifications at all hours of the night, as I would pop up instantly, and it would ruin the chance of a full night's sleep for me. We are talking a ding every 30 to 60 seconds, all night. It was to the point, where I'd be taking sleep medication just to knock me out, and reset every few days, which would impair me at work the next day. We also have a spare bedroom, and sometimes I'll just sleep apart for some solace. Anyways. This week, after a good period of her alarms being decent, there was one at 530, 545, 6, notifications, all of it. Earlier that morning, I woke up from her snoring at like 2am, I spooned her, and we had a quickie, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to sleep after that. I got up, made tea, relaxed, and then figured I'd try again around 4am, to get a couple more hours in. I was just getting to sleep at 5 o'clock, and they woke me up from a dream, so was at least getting some quality time in, a whole hour before work. 530, 545 her alarms went off. I lost it at this point. I got up, threw on the lamp, basically said, frick, you're, frick, I'm alarms, why do you do this to me? Then put on my robe, and threw my pillow at her as I stomped out. Yeah. A dick move. Not my proudest moment. She ignored me completely for two days, silent treatment, sleeping apart. And the last two days it has been better, but I've given her more distance too, as I know she's mad. She was disappointed we didn't have our for that weekly date night yesterday. I came home later after work to shop, and gave us some space. We had a pretty normal night, chatted a bunch, set up the Christmas tree and everything seemed to be decent. Another strange one this week. We had a great time our anniversary a week ago. Multiple rounds of 6, we usually have daily anyways, and it was all normal. 
Then I noticed she didn't put on her birth control patch that week after her period. We talked about it, and I said, if you get pregnant, it happens, and I'm there for you, but could you please refill your prescription on Monday, since you're seeing your doctor anyway. She agreed. Tuesday I had duty symptoms that went away, which I've never had before, and that was super strange. A few things were crossing my mind at this point, but I trusted her. Part of me thinks something happened, that she is not sharing, as the alarm slash notification slash pillow incident happened Wednesday. More context. She had been listing her condo on Airbnb the past year, while living with me. It had a flood, and is undergoing restoration the past two months. This morning, she made it quite clear that her intentions were to move back there once the work is done. So, in my eyes, she was projecting this on me well before the pillow incident, accusing me of being with her out of convenience. We have had minor arguments, and it was always her go-to threat that she could just move back there once the current guests are gone etc etc. Which is a topic on of itself. This morning while cuddling, she tells me she can't see herself with someone that would be so quick to react that way and abuse her, and what is next? Violence? She doesn't think I love her, it is all lust, and that I'm with her because it is convenient. Like, what? She lives with me, all my furnishings, in at first in my apartment, and now we share a house, so she can earn Airbnb income, and I'm in this for convenience. She talked about it with her sister, and doesn't see us working out. She intends to move back to her condo, once the work is complete. I was floored by this. Am I the asshole? Am I just being played? Or did I not meet her expectations to help her conceive? I really can't make sense of this. She is extremely sweet, soft spoken, we have a language barrier, so communication is usually pretty clear, but we both miss nuances here and there which has led to some escalation, but really? I'm heartbroken, but I can't help, but think she is just acting out again, and using this threat to hurt me for whatever reason. Or, she has already checked out long ago, and is in fact using me, and possibly already with another person somehow. I have no idea what to think. Crotchetting librarian says. I think you all moved way too fast, and didn't get to know each other, before reaching all these relationship milestones. Throwing a pillow at her out of anger, is definitely a red flag, sorry. It's out of line, and it is abusive. She also crossed boundaries multiple times, by stopping her birth control unilaterally. Again, I think you all move too fast and unfortunately are spotting red flags, that you probably ignored before. I'm sorry. Maybe things will work out, if you reconcile maybe get couples therapy and individual therapy. If you don't, use the time for reflection and again, see a therapist. Immortal underscore wombat89 says. Dude this story is, frick, ed up on so many levels. This sounds like a toxic relationship to me from both sides. Way too fast for everything. You don't even know each other yet. Just be happy she isn't pregnant and get the, frick out. You both should've taken everything while I'm more slow. Getting kids after a year of being together? This is how teenagers, frick, up their lives normally, and they don't do it on purpose. Sudden underscore baseball underscore 1605 says. Just. Nah. This needs to be over. You moved in with a complete stranger. She wants kids a sap, on a timeline, you are wishy-washy. Throwing the pillow, and yelling at her about the alarms isn't acceptable. If this was an ongoing problem like you said, sleep in separate rooms. But, you had sex with her, because you can't get back to sleep, so it was fine that day. Her going off her pills is asking for an oops baby, but she's warning you so it's not baby trapping. She's very clear she wants a baby regardless of who it's with. If you keep sleeping with her, you are consenting. This is a big red flag waving at you. Do you want to be a dad again, with someone you barely know? Probably not. Stop having sex with her FFS. 
you do have a choice here. Sh's right to break it off. You are both not in this for the right reasons, nor are you prepared to work out conflicts. A year is nothing. The honeymoon phase should have just ended, instead you guys are fighting about alarms and babies and throwing tantrums. Solstice Sky says. She's 42. She's made it abundantly clear she wants children. Everything else in your post is just noise. Ask yourself right now if you want to have kids with her or not, if the answer is no then you should let her go. You are not entitled to waste her life. Regarding the alarms, you need to make it very clear none should be going off before 6am. If she can't compromise on this, you two don't need to be together. r slash dating over 30. Thanks Gusling says. How do you move past the anger phase after the breakup? Long story short, I, 33, stupidly held on to a narcissistic type, also 33, who would love a bummy and then discard me, only to pull me back again for 2 years. The cycle went around and around, until he eventually cheated on me, and left me for the girl 4 months ago, who I recently found out he has cheated on too, but she doesn't know, and is moving countries to be with him. I know in my heart it has been a blessing in disguise as his own friends warned me to stay away from him, and I chose not to listen, so it ended up being him ending it in the most savage way possible. I can't seem to get past my rage. I'm so bitter that life continues to reward him, and I'm the one who was an idiot, addicted to the cycle, and I'm the one left picking up the pieces, whilst he gets to have a full relationship, while I struggle with the dating scene, since it's not kind to women over 30, and live in a luxury apartment his parents bought for him. A part of me wanted to contact her and tell her, but I realized that it wasn't my place, and would be for purely vindictive reasons. Before anyone suggests therapy, I'm already in it for my abandonment issues and self-worth. I'm very aware I have work to do there. I'm also on Sris now. I just don't know how to get over the anger and bitterness. Anonymous 558686 says. Look into how to process the emotion and once you've done that forgive yourself and move on. Equivalent Force 191 says. As someone who has been in your position before, I can say that it's completely normal to feel angry. I mean, you trusted this guy, and he betrayed you. It's a crappy feeling when someone you love cheats on you, and insults your intelligence in the process. However, if there's one thing I wish I knew when I was in your shoes, it's this, he never deserved you. You deserve the type of guy who appreciates everything you do for him, and would move mountains to be with you, the type of guy who brings out the best in you, and makes you feel happy. This guy clearly does not bring out the best in you, if he's making you angry. In addition, the fact that he choose to cheat instead of ending a relationship, if he's not happy in it shows that he's inconsiderate. Even though it may seem like life is rewarding him, here's the reality. He's with the girl who is most likely going to find herself in your current position in a few months. This girl has no idea she cheated on him, which means she's in a relationship with a liar. Heck, he is someone who probably cheats in every relationship, and thinks he is slick enough to get away with it. Be thankful that you are now rid of him, and free to find the type of guy who respects you. It'll take time to heal, but you will eventually. Smashbusters says... I struggle with the dating scene, since it's not kind to women over 30 it looks very good to me. I, M37 major city, see no shortage of beautiful eligible women in their 30s on apps. I don't even bother with anyone under 30. Too much of a wood girl vibe from anyone in their 20s. Parenthood isn't really attractive anymore. People in their 20s come across as flimsy, gamey, and commitment phobic due to paradox of choice and lack of experience, it takes a lot of dating to realize how hard it is to find a keeper. Likewise, there's no shortage of quality eligible men. I do encounter a lot of women that fade away after the first couple dates though. I get the sense that they assume something, or try to predict the future without much to go on. Some of them seem way jaded. 
I guess my point is, don't discard options early, because of your bad experience. People are not one dimensional. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.